What's up gamers? Hey once again, thanks again for tuning in to the Gamer Robert DL channel. So what do we have today? Today we have RetroArch for the PlayStation Vita. Now this is for all firmwares. So we will download the VPK and also we will download a 7z zip file so that we can extract it. Now RetroArch combined with LOL icon to increase the CPU speed. It is a great combination. So we go to the website. I'll go ahead and leave it in the description and we're going to download the latest VPK. Now they might come up with the newest one. So make sure you get the newest one and install it in the PlayStation Vita. We will also extract 7z zip. So you guys can see I am downloading it right now. Okay. So now we connect the PlayStation Vita via Vita shell when we press select. And we're going to copy the VPK to the root of the PlayStation Vita. Okay. So now we move on to the PlayStation Vita. And we're going to go to UX0. And we're going to install the RetroArch VPK. Now it shouldn't take that long. It should be fairly quick. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and launch RetroArch. Now upon first time we launch it, it might take 10 seconds to load. Now this will create some folders and our data within UX0 or UXO. So you guys can see the interface. It's kind of plain. Now that's where the 7C zip file comes into play. So I don't want to touch anything in the interface because it might mess up the retro arch. So we go to Vita Shell and we go to our data folder and you guys can see we have a retro arch and we have some folders in there. Now for thumbnails, I didn't really show it in this video. I don't really recommend it. It really lags retro arch within the Vita plus the files are so large, sometimes more than one gigabyte. So I would not recommend it. So we connect PlayStation Vita via USB. and we're going to extract the 7z zip so we go to data we select retro arch and now this is where we're going to drag and drop the files from the 7z zip okay so we access the zip information and we're just going to select all that information and drag Simple as that guys, this will give us better interface for our RetroArch application within the PlayStation Vita. So that's all we need. So we move on to the PlayStation Vita and we launch RetroArch. Okay, so you guys can see it's still plain, but we're going to modify that right now. We go to the right and we scroll down all the way to user interface. Now you guys can see a little bit more in the options there. But we go to appearance. Now you can change the background, some information as well. Now in the menu icon theme, you just select right and it'll change it. You can do right again. Now I like the retroactive it has the best icons for my taste you guys can go ahead and change also the color theme which is pretty cool this is awesome finally had time to do this video for you guys now you can also enable the thumbnails box arts left thumbnails now you guys will see what I'm talking about that it causes a lot of delay within the menu of retro arch we'll show an example at the end of the video so now you guys can see that I don't have anything scanned or no emulator information so now we're going to load a game but I kept my games in UMAO you can get your SD2 Vita from strident.com I'll go ahead and leave that link in the description highly recommend it now we're just going to load a game. Now I would suggest to 
launch Nintendo with Quick NES. Also, the graphics for this look amazing with Retro Arch for the emulators. I know that there are standalone emulators for it, but with Retro Arch it looks pretty cool and pretty neat. So now you can press L1, R1, select and start to go to the menu and close the loaded game. Now go load content, collection, and now we can scan directory or you can scan a file. Now we go to UMA0 and now I'm going to scan the Nintendo folder. Now when I scan this it might take a long time so I would suggest if you guys go to settings and change the screen to go into sleep mode to 30 minutes then that would help. So now we will go to video. We will change the aspect ratio to 69. Now you can also look at all the other options in there. Now you can go to directory, look at more information. These are basically the folders in our UX0 under data. Now for history list size, this is all the games that you're loading throughout your gameplay. Like if you play uh, Contra or any other game, then it will list it in the history and you can increase it as well. Now you guys can see my history loaded one game. Also to the right you can see the controller for NES which is pretty cool because we scan the directory. Now all my games are showing up. Pretty cool. It's awesome guys. I like the user interface. Now I'm going to run Contra with quick NES. Now the sound, as you guys know, I'm sorry I couldn't load it up, but the sound works perfectly. The game also works perfectly. I know that under Nestor J or the other emulators kind of lags with the sound, but here it is pretty good. Okay, so now we close that game. Now I love Contra so I'm going to add it to my favorites so then you can just add your games or your favorite games to your list which is pretty cool also. Now to search for information you can press triangle and then you can type in the game. So now also you can load the core or the emulator for this instance. You can see CPS1, CPS2, so I'm going to load it, nice, so now I have CPS2 emulator or core loaded, now I go and select my CPS2 game ROMs and I'm going to load the game. Okay, so it tells me CPS2, you guys can see it loads, it's pretty cool. Now I know I increased the volume, sorry guys, but I didn't add it volume. The volume is also perfectly synced. So the gameplay as well, it is flawless. You guys can see that I have the CPU increase to the holy for RetroArch and it'll save the information to it. Now this is pretty nice guys. Just a little fight with Spider-Man. Okay, so now we exit the game. Now I want to go to load content, collections, and I want to scan that directory. Now some of them, when you scan that directory, it won't show where it's standalone emulator, but some of them might go to Final Burn Alpha or Mami. So when you scan that directory, it will try to match the ROM to the emulator and it'll create a new tab or new information there. You guys can see there's more options in there. Net play, I haven't tried that. It would be pretty cool to try it. So now if you go to collections and you scan directory. Now for example, I go to UMAO and I'm going to scan the whole RetroArch ROMs. 
it will take forever to read all the ROMs. It will read every file inside the ROM as well. So it might take a while. For this instance, you might need to change the settings to 30 minutes in order to go to sleep. So pretty cool. You can keep your favorites. We will go and load core. For this instance, I am going to load the PlayStation 1. So now there's only one emulator in there. Now, unfortunately for PlayStation 1 games, it did not create like a list like Super Nintendo. So you will need to choose them individually. Also under settings to automatically add content to the playlist once you are playing a game. So if you're playing a game for Nintendo and you're gonna take a long time, you can go ahead and load it automatically. So while you're playing, it's loading all the playlists. So now I'm going to test Crash Bandicoot. Okay, so now it says no PlayStation BIOS found. So we will go ahead and add the BIOS right now. I'll go ahead and leave those links in my Twitter page. So we get the PlayStation 1 BIOS and we go to our data folder. We go to system. Data Retro Arch System, and that's where we drop the BIOS. So we just open that folder and we drag. Simple as that, guys. That's all we need for the BIOS. Just remember to go to my Twitter. Also, remember to include your ROMs either in UXO or UMAO with your SD2 Vita. I'll go ahead and leave a link in my Twitter as well. So check it out. Okay, so we move on back to the PlayStation Vita and we launch RetroArch. Now we're going to see if the PlayStation 1 core or emulator will ask us for the BIOS. So we will launch the same game. So we launch Crash Bandicoot. So we launch it and you guys can see that no BIOS prompt was provided by RetroArch. So we are good with the BIOS. Also for the PlayStation 1 games, Sometimes within the menu, it will lag for some games or Crash Bandicoot, it didn't. Now, some games might lag within the menu, but in gameplay, it is pretty awesome. It is synced, the music also, or the sound. Some of the games won't even load and it will crash RetroArch. So it's just testing the games within RetroArch to see if they work for you. It can load image, bin, and eboot which is nice so if you find any of those then you can load it up with RetroArch or that core so now you guys can see that this is the black PlayStation Vita and I will enable the thumbnails so you guys can see the difference so under appearance of course is retro system which I like so I have title screen and box arts you can change it so this is why I don't really recommend it because sometimes the files for the box arts or the themes or that information it's one gig in weight so I wouldn't recommend it plus when you scroll down it will freeze the menu for retro arch so I mean you can make it cool like that I mean I would like to have that in a PC but for the PlayStation Vita I would not recommend it plus it's using more space so hopefully they can enhance it even with the CPU speed increase it does nothing to it I mean it looks cool at a glance but if it's not working and stealing my space for more ROMs then I would not recommend it but that's up to you guys you guys can see my Sega Genesis Super Nintendo Nintendo Game Boy Advance all emulators PlayStation 1 Mami Final Burn Alpha remember to go to my Twitter and get all that information so if this helped guys remember to hit like subscribe comment share with your friends as always gamer rebirth out